Have you ever stumbled upon a dark family secret? Have you found out something about your family that was completely unexpected? How did you handle the revelations? A long time ago, back when I was still in middle school, my mom's best friend died. She wouldn't tell me how she died. Only that it was sudden. When I asked why we weren't going to the funeral, she told me that there wouldn't be one, because her body was being donated to science. I didn't ask any more questions. That was the last time we ever talked about her. Well, five months ago my mom handed me her phone to find the number for Domino's, and as I'm scrolling through her contacts I come across the phone number of the dead best friend. Biggest what the duck moment of my life. The next day I called it from a payphone at Waffle House and she picked up. I instantly recognized the voice and accent. She's not dead. Second biggest what the duck moment of my life. This needs a follow up. Too much of a cliffhanger. I didn't know what to say, so I hung up and went back home. When I got home I looked her name up on Google, but I didn't find anything. I told my sister, but she doesn't really care. I told my dad too, and he seems about as spooked as I do, but he's of no use because they're divorced and rarely ever talk to each other. I also told my girlfriend, but she doesn't really like it when I talk about my mom, so she's of no use either. I'd ask my mom, but don't think it's a good idea. This is a pretty big secret and I don't want her to know that I know. Plus I like mysteries. I feel like one of the hardy boys. When I first started dating my girlfriend, I was invited to her very conservative Catholic parents 25th wedding anniversary party. I was hanging out with her and her 24 year old older brother afterwards, and she was talking about how her mom found her birth control earlier that week, and lectured her about how wrong premarital ex was, we weren't having ex. I quick did some mental math and said she should talk, since her brother's birthday is in 5 months. They both looked at me with a crazy amount of shock on their faces. They had never figured that out. My dad recently told me a family story of one of his older, distant relatives, we'll call her Jill, mainly because I don't remember her name. This all happened some 70 years ago, a good 20 years before my father was born. It's a bit unclear what actually happened, but I'll try my best to piece it together. Jill was a plain looking girl who was raised on a small, country farm. Being a bit of a quiet tomboy, she didn't go to school, but took care of the farm's horses instead. One day in her teenage years, Jill was in the stables, when something spooked one of the horses. It reared up and kicked Jill in the face. Since there was very limited medical surgery, she ended up somewhat disfigured and scarred. She withdrew from much of society and lived solely on the farm as a hermit. Years of isolation pass and one day, Jill vanishes. Perhaps her immediate family knew, but no extended family were ever told what happened. That is it, until they were notified of her death four years later. You see it turns out, Jill had ran away and enlisted in the army. She had fought overseas in World War II, and had been killed. Now that might not seem like much of a story, but keep in mind that only men fought in World War II. Jill had somehow managed to pose as a man for four years in the army without being detected, and it was her death that gave her away. Considering the rest of my family history isn't very exciting, I think it's a pretty cool story. My grandmother has all the dirty little secrets, but she's too proper to spill anything. Until this one night when she told me about my grandfather's, her husband's, family. Essentially they were poor living off the streets and trying to earn money during Australia's gold rush. Anyways, the family had too many kids and not enough money, so they sold one of their kids to a Chinese businessman. He would have been my grandfather's great uncle I suppose. No one knew, and she hasn't said boo of it since then. My mom was born in Colombia, and moved to the US when she was 12. I never knew much about her family, and was told multiple variations of sugar-coated stories by other family members whenever I tried to find out more about my family history. I was already aware that the Italian side of my family, paternal, had ties to the mob in New Jersey, and eventually moved to Miami where my parents would eventually meet. Through Google, I also found out that my grandfather was a snitch, ended up in the witness protection program after being implicated in a murder and being indicted for selling massive amounts of cocaine. Okay, 
I thought, I can deal with that knowledge. Shitty about the coke, but maybe my mom's side wasn't so bad? Thanks to Ancestry websites and Google, I soon discovered multiple newspaper articles from the 1980s that would indicate that my maternal Colombian grandparents were the leaders of massive pot smuggling ring, which at the time, was referred to as the largest pot smuggling operations ever carried out in the US. Both my grandparents were sentenced to over 250 years each, but after that my trail ran cold, and do not know how or when they died. Family rumors would have me believe that my grandfather died of a heart attack in jail soon after hearing that my grandmother was murdered in Colombia. My mom never talks about it, and I don't feel comfortable asking. Very few of my friends know about it, but I must say I find it ironic that my Italian paternal grandparents were coke dealers, while my Colombian maternal grandparents were prolific pot smugglers. TLDR. Three out of four of my grandparents are convicted drug dealers, cause of death still unknown for maternal grandparents. Somehow, I went to college, have no illegitimate children or drug habits. Hooray. I found out that one of my ancestors was exiled from Russia for challenging an army officer to a duel, with swords, and winning. My ancestor worked in the Tsar's stable, and the argument arose when the army officer insisted on riding my ancestor's horse. The horse threw him off, and the army officer shot it. We've always been horse people. My parents used to always joke about how we picked the wrong boy at the hospital. I never thought much of it. A year ago, I'm now 17, they told me that when I was born in the almost exact time as a boy whose parents abandoned him. The boy was almost the same size as well. Now, you'd think that this would never happen. But I was born in China at a hospital that somehow mixed us two up. Essentially, they weren't exactly sure if I was the son of my parents. My mom looked at the two of us and swore that I was the one, despite the nurse's tags stating otherwise. Genetic tests were, relatively, expensive then, and were refused by my mother. They didn't care at the time since there was no parent to claim the other boy. Now, I'm about to go off to college and I have no intention of finding out whether or not I'm the biological son. Strange when I think about the other boy though. People always say I do look like my parents though, so I have little doubt that mother knew best. Edit, more crazy considering that I moved to the US in 5th grade, and am now lucky enough to go to a top American school. How different the other boy's life must be is just insane to think about. TLER, nurse mixed up two boys. Mother declared me to be the son, and to this day we'd rather not know the biological truth. Family is family. My friend's mom, not mine, was one of a few children from a Catholic school when she was a kid, who pressed charges against a priest who was accused of child molestation, 20 years after the fact. During a family Thanksgiving dinner, she got blackout drunk and admitted to the whole family that she had never been touched by the priest, nor any of her friends. They just wanted the cash from a settlement. She still has all of the money, and I shouldn't know, but my friend did the same thing when he got drunk and told me. P.S. Not my mom. Throw away account. I found out over Christmas whilst doing a family history search online, that my dad had fathered two children by a different woman about 20 years ago. Side note, he and my mother had been married for over 35 years. His name brought up results for not only myself and my two brothers' births, but two other births. He has very unusual first and last names, so curiosity got the better of me, and I started to find out more. The births were registered in north of England, in the Newcastle area. This rang alarm bells immediately, because my dad had worked in this region for five years with the company he worked for in the early 90s. I was only a little kid, and I missed him so much. And so did my brothers and mom, he worked on a two week on, two week off rotor though, so he was always back and forth. Then I dug a little deeper. Just to confirm. I found the children, now grown women, Facebook pages. They still use the last name given to them at birth, our fathers. I didn't contact them because I had a suspicion they'd have no idea they had siblings, and my suspicions were confirmed when I contacted their mother on their instead. At first I told her I was a relative of my dad's, and I wanted to know more about any children he potentially had, 
because I was trying to track him down. She confirmed that he was the father of her children, after I sent her some details and a photo from that time. She proved it 100% by scanning and sending me copies of the birth certificates, and some photos she had of him and their daughters when they were just babies, and she told me to call her. I called her, I can't say I was ever nervous or anxious about this call, but I remember feeling livid. Livid at him mostly, for what he'd done to my mother and us as a family, whilst he had supposedly been working hard and all alone up north, whilst his wife and children sat on their thumbs in Wales patiently waiting for his return every two weeks for five years. I told her my name, and that I was actually his daughter, his only daughter I thought up until that moment, and that I had two other brothers who were older, and my parents had in fact, been married for over 35 years. This poor woman screeched down the phone crying. She never knew any of this. When she met my father, it was in a pub in Newcastle about 3 months after he had moved up there. He said he was single and didn't have any family, and was from Wales, but he lied about the area in which he grew up. A couple of months later they were expecting their firstborn, and about a year after that, a second daughter. She said when he went back to Wales every two weeks she thought it was for work related stuff, and that he would call every other evening from a local phone box because he didn't have a landline. When the daughters were just little kids, the oldest being about three, he left one day to go to Wales and work and never came back. She tried to contact his company he worked for, and they said he no longer worked for them. This was around about the time to my knowledge his five years in Newcastle was up. He had left the company and moved back to Wales. Because he had lied about where he lived in Wales, she was unable to track him, and now being left with two girls and no job, she had to get on with it. After about a month, she realized he wasn't going to contact them again and he was gone, wherever. She didn't have a clue he had a massive family with wife and kids and a mortgage and a dog back home in Wales, and if she had, she definitely would not got into a relationship with him least of all had kids. I haven't brought it up with him, obviously because of my mother, but Christmas was so difficult for me personally knowing this. For two days leading up to Christmas, I got so blind drunk and ducked up, I slept for 18 hours straight on Christmas day, and missed the whole thing. My father was fuming I'd ruined Christmas, and I very nearly then exploded, but I kept my mouth shut. Then, on Boxing Day, I got a call again from the mother in Newcastle telling me she had told her daughters very delicately what had happened, I had contacted her, revealed everything, and that she will leave it up to them to decide what to do. So far, they have done nothing. I have not been in contact with them at all, and vice versa since. However, the mother did call me around February time to check in with me, and see how I was, she's a very nice woman and was curious if I was visiting the north in the future, and if she would like to meet them. I told her I would think about it. I'm actually visiting Newcastle for a hen party in two months, so I'm thinking about it more. Part of me hopes one day they come knocking on our door, because they know where to go now. Part of me doesn't, because of my mother. Over the past seven months, my relationship with my father has disintegrated, and is the chief cause of his stress. It's so bad he's telling me it's exacerbating his heart condition, which he is on pills for. My parents are laying it down to some kind of mid-twenties rebellion, because I didn't have a rebellion when I was a teenager apparently. I just want to kick him in the face every time I see him. The next step in this saga is to tell my eldest brother. He is serious and mature, and will be able to deal with it a bit better I think. He's never had a great relationship with my dad for some reason so I'd like him to know. His wife, my best friend, already knows there is something wrong with me, because I think I'm pretty much having a breakdown over it. The burden is too tough. I'm even struggling with my job. Part of the reason I want them to knock on our door looking for their dad is so that the weight is lifted, but how do you go back from that? My mother is a proud but fragile woman, and it will destroy her. If you got this far, thanks for reading. This helped.